Julie, welcome to this week's EdTech Tuesday video. This week we're going to be talking about some of the newest changes to Google Classroom. Here you see my dashboard with all of the classes that I created. Each class has a three button menu in the upper right corner where you can move, edit, and archive each class. Moving a class simply means moving it over to a different place in your dashboard. Editing means changing the name or the class periods, and archiving it means putting it away in a special file so it doesn't show up on your dashboard any longer. In the bottom right corner of each class tile, there's a folder icon. If you click on this icon, it will open your Google Drive and show you the folder in which all of your Google Classroom files are housed. If you look in the list here, you'll see that every assignment that I've created for my classes has its own separate folder. As you scroll through the list, you'll see that every folder is listed alphabetically. You can change this by clicking on the headers at the top and organize by the owner, which will always be you, and also by the last modified date, which would put your most recent assignments at the top. If you click into one of the specific classes, you can see the other new features in Google Classroom. At the top, you have a header. You can change how this header looks by clicking on one of the two buttons on the far right side. One of them says Change Theme, the other says Upload Photo. If you click on Change Theme, you'll see a list of gallery options. These are pre-chosen pictures that Google Classroom has uploaded. There are also patterns available. As soon as you select a picture or a pattern, Google Classroom will automatically change the colors to correspond to the pattern or picture that you chose. If you like, you can also upload your own picture. The list of posted assignments, which Google Classroom calls the stream, has also changed a little bit. If you scroll down to an assignment that you've already graded and returned, you'll see that there are three numbers. One is the number of students who are done, one is the students who have, are not finished, and one is the number of returns. Students who are done are students who have completed the assignment, you have graded it, returned it to them, and they have resubmitted the assignment. The students who are listed as not done are those whose papers have been graded, but they have not resubmitted the assignments. These three numbers can be really helpful if you have students frequently resubmit work for a higher score. As in previous versions of Google Classroom, there are four different post types. When you go to post an assignment, there is a new feature where you can assign a topic to the assignment that you're posting. This becomes really useful if you use Google Classroom a lot. Often, you'll have 50 to 100 assignments in your Google Classroom by the end of the school year, and it can be difficult to find the old assignments that you've posted. If you assign each assignment to a topic, then you can filter your classroom stream to show assignments only for a specific topic. Another handy feature of Google Classroom is found on the About tab. If you look under the icon of your name, you'll see a button that says Invite Teachers. Here you can put in the username for any teacher that you'd like to collaborate with. You could invite a teacher that you're mentoring, you could invite your mentor if you're a new teacher, you could invite a teacher that's co-teaching with you, another teacher in your department or grade level, or you could also invite a teacher that may be long-term subbing for you. You simply have to type their name in the box and then it adds them as a collaborator. Another useful feature on the About page is the assignment calendar. Even though mine is blank because I don't have any upcoming assignments this week, any assignment that you have posted will show up in this calendar. The last feature I'll show you today is accessed by clicking on the three line menu in the upper left corner of your screen. This is the to-do list. I'm not currently using this feature, but if you wanted to use the to-do list, what it does is it shows you every assignment that you still have to grade in your classes. You can filter at the top by the class periods that you have. If you use this feature, you have another tab at the top called Reviewed. For every assignment that you review, you can click on the three dot menu on the right side and mark it as reviewed. It will disappear from your to-do list and then show up in the reviewed list. This can be really helpful to keep track of all of those assignments that you need to grade. That's all for this week. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.